Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about rules I follow. So let's get into it. So the question question was, hi Frederick, what are some rules of software engineering that you always follow without any exceptions? Well, only two rules comes to mind. Uh, the first rule will be always create solutions that stand in proportion to the problem. And the second rule is always structure your uh, work process so that you get predictable results. Always. These two um, are the are my two rules. Let me dive into them a little bit deeper. So the first rule basically comes down to don't do too much and don't do too little because yeah, software developers have this tendency to do this all the time and I see it absolutely all the time uh, and it usually comes either through ignorance like that they don't actually understand the real problem uh, and sometimes it comes from you know them making things about themselves and sometimes it comes from just not caring or things like that uh, so an example when people over engineer things it's usually either because they sort of like are inspired or like they're more trying to you know, do things for themselves because they think something's really, really cool. Uh, but they can also be ignorant of, as I say, they don't truly understand the problem they're dealing with. A good example of this is uh, this is when like you you're basically in an endless state with some people of migration because they're always hunting for the next tool or the next cool thing or the next stuff that is going to like take this code to the next level. And they like it's sort of like they don't see the see the they don't see the trees for the, for all for in for the woods or whatever right um, an example would have been um, i was talking to a bunch of architects the other day uh, related to like they've had this ongoing like like they're being paid like insane amounts of money for their opinions on certain things and one of the things that they have as a heart issue is that there was a lack within this specific company of uh, documentation and onboarding materials for people so people didn't know what where things were and the people who had been there for quite some time said well no actually that's not 100 percent true but uh, it was not structured in like it wasn't really well made let's be honest there who has ever been at any company anywhere where they felt that yes we have all the things documented and now i understand it's sort of but at the same time it's some of these people have like this idea that oh there is a magic document that will make the years of work that has gone into all of these systems that they will make sense to me now and i go like it's it's like hilarious that you even think that that's going to be possible you think that there's like a like it's like take google or facebook or amazon or something like that do you think that they have everything documented so well that someone can just sit there for i don't know how long it would take to read through all of that and sort of just have an epiphany oh this is how everything works that's usually not how it works said and done uh, they promote that we're going to use a uh, we're going to invest in i think that was backstage that they wanted us to use so the, which is a product provided by Spotify and I basically just raised my hand and I said but I don't think that the question is do uh, we have a lack of tooling here because we already have and and two we have two no three three sources of documentation we have in a private they had a private like the company had a private system that they created themselves they used Confluence and they used Notion that's three and some people even like just put the documentation in like github and i said the problem isn't that you don't have a platform for writing some stuff down it is that nobody's doing it which ties into the other thing that i'm talking about you don't have a structured work process if you do not have a structured work process and that fuck all means it, nothing else like is going to happen you cannot scale your process it's that simple it's the it's literally the industrial revolution type of things uh, that are necessary in order for this for a human process to work i argue because people need guidelines and a predictable structure to follow usually to be consistent you can't just tell people, hey, go and solve this problem and do it really, really well. They need some some of this stuff, right? But as I said, when you don't truly understand, I argue the problem, you will like you will either uh, 
try to overdo it and like start solving problems that you don't actually have like now we're gonna have another system and it's gonna be as empty as the other three that already exist uh, and then you can underdo problems as well you can underdo it and basically create a situation where you're creating shit code that's the easy one people don't truly care about the work or there's like a lot of problems with the work environment or things make them feel unmotivated and so they don't really try to actually put in like a basic effort so that's why i always follow that rule try to find the sweet spot understand what is necessary in order to reach your goals second uh, uh, second rule that i follow as i said was that you need to have a structured work process so otherwise you're not going to be able to scale it and that means that you understand all the steps that are necessary in order for software like to go from someone's workstation out into production in a safe and sustainable way that's not where I stop it though I also say how do you get a new person that's the onboarding thing how does a new person learn everything that they need to learn in order to do your job all the things everything from like your first day like this is actually the thing I can give you a hot tip this is what I do whenever because I this has become basically my identity within or it was my identity in that company where literally s some of the teams had such issues getting this stuff working so they basically just said hey Frederick can you start in that team and I go yeah and then I fixed it and I always did the same thing the first thing is your first day your first pull request should be because there's not going to be anything there I promise you basically your first pull request should be a markdown file where you write down here are all the steps that I took in order to get access to all the systems I need the links to all the important communication channels links to all the important documentation uh, how we do like releases how we work with our agile board like what meetings do we have how like Ex uh, contact information for external parties etc so all of that stuff that I need to, to be able to know uh, all the stuff that I need to know in order to work in this environment because nobody ever writes that down takes it takes literally the same amount of time it takes you like it's a whole line it's literally a to-do list I, it's uh, a file of maybe 50 lines which just reference points that yeah, do this do this do this do this every finding you find like I don't even pay put more effort into it than a single line in many cases and that then becomes the thing that the next person takes up and I have never seen anybody who like basically joined my the team after I joined who didn't appreciate that tiny tiny little effort but as I said that is what I call structured work that's because you I, you I understand that this step will take place then there's going to be a second step because there are going to be follow-up questions etc etc you have to have that ability to understand what steps are going to like it's it's basically understanding a sequence of events and the same thing goes for agile development if you have an un in ineffective uh, work process, if you're dealing with Scrum or if you're de if you're doing s all the way up to safe, doesn't really matter. If you don't truly understand what is necessary in order to find the sweet spot of delivery, in other words, the thing that makes people just as productive as they can be without compromising on quality, that sweet spot, finding that, it's more than just code, guys. This rule applies to everything that you do. And I will even go as far as to say you can you can probably push this to more than like software development because most software developers, as I said, they're really good at just sitting down and like writing code and so forth, but they're really really shit at creating a productive work environment or like a structured work environment where they get consistently good results. Uh, that's why the average software like the most of the software companies are running the way that they are running this is due to this is what causes all this these inefficiencies I argue and it's the main reason uh, why you have so many shitty code bases so what I want you to take away from this is very simple I have two rules that I probably more but these are the rules that I've never I can't even I, I've never compromised with them like I've never f not followed them rule number one make sure that every solution that you have stands in proportion to the problem don't be wild and do something that might be super useful in the future do the thing that seems to be the right move for now so that future work can build on po top of it you can think of it as stacking bricks 
put just a brick under there. Don't just put a gigantic boulder all of a sudden. Put the thing that is necessary for taking the next step and let things grow and organically. Don't try to be more clever than you are. And don't underdo shit. Like don't half ass stuff when you know that it's an important thing, etc. etc. Second rule is always create a structured work environment or a structured process for how to cons deliver consistent results. That is the difference between having a six pack being able to be consistent over time and being fat or like out of shape for most of your life that's also the difference between being really good and smart and learning and studying and all of this sort of stuff and it's the difference between having a really well working onboarding process work environment ci cd pipeline etc etc it's the or a factory doing handmade things versus having a mass produce like a mass uh, a, a, an assembly line or things like that that way of thinking, being able to structure things so that you know that the first thing you should do is A and then B and then C and then etc etc and then you will get these results. That structure is very very important and I put that I put even for my own personal products I know myself well enough to know that I'm gonna be very lazy with some stuff or I'm not gonna think about this and so forth so I always make sure that my pipelines include a linter I always make sure that there's a type check in there so my code compiles I always make sure that my containers or whatever are pre-built and have some basic test that just pings the thing so that it doesn't just break because I didn't build my assets correctly because I'm a human and I'd make mistakes but if I create a gateway system or like this sort of structure process that everything goes through doesn't matter if it's in code or with automated testing or it's like a personal thing where you like you check boxes on a on a checklist or something like that I know that if I just go through that thing I will get the results that I want these are my two rules have a great day